This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Parental guidance, we're about to watch a little bit of a police excessive force situation and then go over what a judge had to say to those police officers after the fact. Okay, so there's no sound on this, so let's just, uh, let's just watch it without sound. But here we have the Allentown police. There's a man with his hands at his sides talking to police. He points at something. It looks like the officer shoves him. And then... And then they all jump him, basically. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's a dozen officers here. And it does not look like it is going well for the man who got shoved. And then the police seem to have formed a human wall to prevent citizens from either helping or even seeing what's going on. And he's handcuffed and they pick him up and they throw him in the back of the paddy wagon. So he's talking to the officers. We'll see what was being said in a moment. The guy slaps his hand down. The other officer shoves him. He had a cigarette in his hand. That's what the sparks were. And then they grab him, and you'll hear about what happens to him in a moment. So this is going to be Judge Maria Dantos of Allentown, Lehigh County Court of Common Pleas, my district. This is literally the courthouse that is five blocks down from me. I have met Judge Dantos before, but I haven't had any cases before her. Um, but I wanted to go over what she had to say about that interaction. I think you might find it refreshing. She says, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your participation in this very difficult case. Your involvement, obviously, we couldn't bring this to a close without you. So from everyone involved, my deepest gratitude. Now, what is she talking about? The jury just found that guy not guilty. I would like to talk to you before you leave, but your service is concluded and you don't have to stay. But give me a minute. When you get back in the room, I'm actually going to have you stay for a moment while I deliver my remarks. I wish on this day that this courtroom were packed with people. It's not. Nobody's here. Nobody's listening. And I'm not trying to incite anyone in the community, nor am I trying to incite the Allentown Police Department. I think they mean uh, I-N-C-I-T-E there but I have some things to say. I will try to be brief and tempered in my remarks. I am not an ivory tower judge. I did my time from all areas of this courtroom. I worked with some of the finest men and women that law enforcement has to offer. I spent a decade out at night with police in the DA's office on raids, on search warrants, on investigations, conducting interviews at murder scenes. I thought I had seen it all. I was very proud of my years of service I tried to provide to my community. I do protect and serve. But then you, you come in here with this case and proudly display to this community how you talk to people. There were at least nine Allentown police officers there that night. That's likely 90% of the evening's platoon. That is a lot for a 200-man department. You came into that scene like angry, hostile bullies from your first contact with those citizens, and especially Officer Batoni. For not the first time in recent history, I became ashamed. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed of the officers and their conduct and their words and actions, and I was ashamed of the office I spent 17 years in that they would bring this prosecution. Now, there's going to be people, it's already happened, who come and say, oh, Judge Dantos, those law enforcement officers were right in what they did. What was he doing coming out of his house? What was he doing lipping off? You know, those people, as the officers said, are your community. So the officers were mouthing off to the citizens, calling them, among other things, those people and such. They called the police because there was a man with a gun in their neighborhood who was, by the way, not because the Commonwealth, 
brought it out, later found a man with a gun, had nothing to do with these people. Do you know how hard it is for members of that community to call the police? I can vouch for this. People in Allentown do not call the police because we do not have good experiences with our police department. What happened to protect and serve? Isn't that still on the cars? You come into that community because they had the courage to call you and ask for help. And by Officer LeBron's own testimony to everybody who wants to back the police in this case, his own testimony, no crime was committed when he shoved the defendant down on the ground. That is a fact. That is this case. I have seen murder cases, shootings, robberies, burglaries, pled to all manner of officers. Is this case nothing? You chose to, instead, put on display police officers calling people these names, which I'm not even going to read because we can't read them, uh, threatening to shoot someone's dog, forming your disgusting blue line of four officers who turned their backs and said they saw nothing. You saw that in the video. The four officers made a line in front of the people who were protesting the, uh, the treatment of that man. You perjured yourselves. You escalated a situation without cause. Cops smirking on the stand at this jury, laughing at the defense attorney, high-fiving in the hallway after testifying as if there was some Thing, anything to be proud of here. You, Officer LeBron, shoved Mr. Perez because you were mad. Period. And then you got up on the stand and told the jury that you were just trying to make some space. That is not what happened. And this prosecution, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but it is no different than coming in here and saying to a jury, ladies and gentlemen, who do you believe? Me, the good guys, or your lying eyes? It's all on video, and yet they come in here and tell you something that is not substantiated by that video. So for everyone in the community who has only seen the morning call video, I invite you to look at the evidence that this jury saw from the body cams of these very officers who proudly got up here and prosecuted this case against this man. It's a vicious cycle. I've seen men and women exhibit great professionalism in encountering situations where they were spit on by the community, hit on by members of the community. Community. Perhaps with police community tension so high right now, if you showed even a small human level of respect to this community, we wouldn't even be here. Nine officers, most of the night shift, pulling cars from other areas of the city because you lost it. That's what happened. You lost it over nothing. Because someone was talking to you in a manner you didn't like, no crime. You serve them. Choices were made. I warned this Commonwealth, and yet you displayed this conduct for the world to see. It's shameful. I'd really like to be a healer. I would really like to unite this community between law enforcement and the citizens. But the blame for this lays with you, and it is for you to fix. I am grateful for this jury. I am grateful for the opportunity of calling this out for what it is. You're excused. Mr. Perez, please stand. My common response to people who resist arrest is, when the police show up and they tell you to leave, leave. When the police show up and they tell you to stop talking, stop talking. However, the law allows for what you did that night. It was, in my humble opinion, an unlawfully excessive use of force, just as justification allows you to then defend yourself. You are released. Please wait for me in the jury room. We are adjourned. So holy mackerel, that was Judge Dantos defending the defendant who simply protested the way the officers were behaving and went and talked to them calmly and peacefully about it. He's well within his rights to do so, and the police instead smacked his hand, shoved him to the ground, beat him. I believe they broke his nose or, or, or other injuries to his body and then arrested him, and then had the audacity to charge him and follow through. The prosecution even had the audacity to follow through with the prosecution of the man as if nothing wrong had been done, and no rights were violated, and he had been actually guilty of some kind of crime, which he had not. So the jury saw through that, the judge saw through that, and the judge had those six pages of ripping the officers uh, a new one. Could she hold them in contempt for all of this? Uh, no, not really. They would have to have done something contemptuous in court. 
perjuring themselves isn't contempt, that's perjury. So who's going to bring perjury charges? The very same prosecution that supported the officers. It is unbelievable how nothing happens to the officers because the prosecutor has to continue to work with the officers, so the prosecutor never wants to discipline the officers or bring any charges against the officers. Uh, what I do have as a Pennsylvania citizen and as a citizen of Lehigh County, I have the Freedom of Information Act, and I can request further information. And so I will grab that body cam footage as well, and uh, whatever else is available in the case. Maybe uh, ask for information about pro prosecution and why they, you know, any decisions to prosecute or not prosecute. And we'll see what uh, what we can get. Would this be a 42 USC 1983 case? Yeah, you bet. I expect that uh, his attorney will explore 42 USC 1983, which is basic civil rights violations, and there should be some kind of settlement with the city of Allentown, which unfortunately will be paid by my taxes, as it always is. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to moving out of this area and getting away from this police system because I have had nothing but problems with the Allentown police. A few years ago, someone tried to invade my home, broke my front window, and I had it all on video, and I even had their license plate, and the police did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I called and begged, and they did nothing. It felt like they were punishing me for calling the police. And that has been my consistent experience with the Allentown Police Department. So we'll put a video out now and see if we can amplify Judge Dantos's words to our audience and, um, and get the word out about her wonderful words criticizing the Allentown Police Department's behavior. So that is our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you to our sponsors.com slash law supporters and our patreon.com slash LJ French supporters. This is a community supported channel and we would not be able to produce this level of content without your help. We currently pay Brandon, uh, Tactical is my assistant, and I pay myself out of the support that you, that you provide and the fund that come from YouTube and Twitch. And without that, we just wouldn't be able to, to, to work at this level. And so we really appreciate whenever you make your pledge and support our channel financially. Coming up sometime here in 2020, I expect to convert this whole thing into a nonprofit corporation. And when that happens, I will make a big announcement and your contributions will be tax deductible where applicable for, for starters in the United States. That's not yet, but that's what we're looking forward to. So for now, thank you very much to our $50 plus supporters for the month of March, Wes Delge, Aspernari, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Otta, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, Jared Bales and Anders Thorenfeld. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who will be scrolling on the screen in front of me. These supporters will be in the description of every video that drops on YouTube. I thank you so very much. I'll bring some dogs in here. I love you all. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and I'll see you in the videos. Bye. You guys are fun dogs. side.